Welcome to Lava Engineering channel. In today's, I'm going to teach you on the subject of power system transients. This is a very much important syllabus in the final year engineering students, especially electrical and electronics engineering students. Today, we are going to see on the first topic is transients. What is a transients? We all know a transients is an outward manifestation of a sudden changes in circuit condition. That is, whenever a switch is in the power system, whether you are opening the circuit breaker or closing the circuit breaker or a fault occurs in the system, a sudden disturbance takes place in the entire power system. This, this, this period is called a transient period. This period will be very short. If you are not giving importance for this transients, it leads to a the entire collapse of electrical network. That is, during this transient period, the circuit components are subjected to a greater stress which from the excessive currents or voltage, the damage results in a plant shutdown or a complete blackout of the city. You see this diagram, you can see a voltage spikes and transients. This transients will occur only for a short duration of time. So, the transients should be a considered in electrical system. Now, what is the causes of a transients? There are two major causes of the transients. One is the internal cause and an external cause. The internal causes are due to the first one is the switching surges. The switching surges is the opening and closing of a switch in a power system. And second one is the insulation failures. Third one is an arcing ground. And fourth one is the ferro resonance. And we all know very well the external cause for the electrical power system transients is due to a light. Now, now we will come across what are the internal causes. When you are seeing on the switching surges, as a name, the switching surge means a sudden interruption in any circuit. A surge means a overcurrent spikes that are caused in the circuit. When there is a sudden or a sudden interruption of a circuit that is due to the, the opening and closing of the switches, a high enormous amount of voltages or current will be induced. For example, if you take a highly inductive circuits, at the sudden interruption, what will happen in inductive circuit? For example, if just you are switching on the uh, if you're switching on the tube light or switching on the water pump, what will happen when you, at the initial start that you can see a lot of voltage spike. The reason is the inductor energy, that is the inductance has a capacity of storing the energy when released during the on condition. This leads to a sudden interruption in the circuit leads to a danger in electrical system. So similarly, the switching surges, the magnetic field the about the inductor current conductor collapses. This leads to a very high voltages that can be generated in the point. Because of the high voltage generation, what will happen? What are the equipments that are connected to the uh, system? The insulation failure takes place. The electrical breakdown occurs because of the high voltages that generated in the power system, especially in the electric, uh, electricity distribution grid resulting in the short circuit or the blown fuse. Now come to the next important concept. It is an arcing ground. What is an arcing ground? It is an electrical phenomenon. Usually it occurs in an ungrounded three phase system. That is the ungrounded three phase system. The neutral point is not connected to earth. When the neutral point is not connected to the earth, this phenomenon takes place. This phenomenon is also one of the major cause of a transients. You can see this diagram. In the left hand side, you can see a three phase system. The system is the balance. You can see a neutral N, but it is not connected to the earth. The, there will be a capacitance exists between each phase with respect to ground. Since there is, since the ground is at zero potential, that is all the um, currents or the capacitive currents are balanced. So we can say IA plus IB plus IC will be equal to zero. Now I'm, now, now I'm taking the right hand side circuit. If you see a fault occurs in the phase C, what will happen? Automatically the phase A and phase B, there will be a capacitance that will be connected to the ground. Since the B, uh, since the A and B have the capacitance and C has a fault, since the neutral N is not connected to the air, this, uh, this capacitance that is IA charging current in the capacitor IA and IB will form the path that is the current IA plus IB will tend to move towards IC. Then that seems the direction of current in the phase 3 
will be opposite to the phase A and B. That is, I can say I A and I B, the direction of current I A and I B will be same, whereas the current I C will be opposite. That is, the current moving towards the neutral point. Normally, in the neutral point, there will be a zero voltage potential, but at this point, the voltage there will be some exists of voltage in this neutral point. So I, I can't say my voltage across this V that is new uh, n is zero. There will be some voltage because the polarity of voltages changes its direction at the point C because this I A and I B tends to they find the path through flow through the C. Okay. Now because of this, what is happening? The normally now you see. Uh, what is the phase voltage? We can say when you are comparing A and N, we can say the phase voltages will be V A N. But here, because of the change in the shift of the ground potential, that is in the ground potential here, it is a zero. Usually, it should be a zero. But because of the change in direction of current that is moving towards the neutral point, my my there will be some voltages. That voltages I can say as at the N point, my voltage is V C. So if I say the phase voltages. That is V A N is equal to V A minus V C. That is nothing but your line voltage. So in simple way, I can say if there is any fault in one phase, the root three times the value will be in the healthy phase. So because of the root three times value in the phases, healthy phases. That is healthy phases means high A and high B. My insulation damages takes place. The system get collapse leads to arcing. So this is one of the important parameter in transients. And the finally we will come across the ferro resonance. We all know a linear resonance circuit that depends on the frequency, whereas the L and C values will be fixed. But here it is a ferro resonance means we will be having an inductor which is of non-linear inductance. That is usually the reactance of the inductor not only depends on the frequency. But also the magnetic flux in the core, so that that arises a resonance condition where the current will be very high. This condition is known as ferro resonance condition. Now we are coming ferro resonance. See now you see in the description I have given here the ferro resonance is a non-linear resonance type of resonance in electrical circuit which occurs when the circuit containing a non-linear inductance which from from the source that has a series similar to a RLC series. But here, the inductance, the reactance value of the inductor, not only depends on the frequency, but also it depends on the the magnetic flux in the material of the core. Now, coming to the next external causes. Now, based on the wave shape, as we all know, transients, it is a sudden disturbance in the power system. It has some wave shape and wave shape and based on the wave shape, the power transients are classified into three. One is an oscillatory transients. And impulsive transients and multiple transients. As we all know, the impulsive transients. The best example is lightning. During the lightning, that is during the direct stroke, when the lightning strikes on directly on the transmission line, an impulsive transients is created. This will be of high voltage, and they starts to reduce to the lower value. This is the best example of impulsive transients. Not only the uh, not only the lightning takes directly from Directly from the source to the ground, that is from the thundering clouds that is uh, hitting directly to the ground, but also by the neighboring clouds. In the neighboring clouds, the peak value will be very very lower when compared to the direct stroke. Now to the oscillatory transients. What is an oscillatory transients? The oscillation it is a composed of large number of frequency waves. That will be of either polarity. It is an either they will be in the positive cycle or it may be in the negative cycle. Here. We can say a best example for an oscillatory transients is energizing of capacitor. Once you are energizing the capacitor, because the frequency of the oscillation is ultimately depend on the value of the capacitance, value of the capacitance. And the one more thing, the another common cause for the oscillatory transients is the energizing of transmission line. Now coming to the multiple transients with a single cause, as the name, the multiple transients in the sense. At a at a time, the multiple transients is a combination of many overlap transients. Take them more than switching action. In one switching action, if you are just an instant of switching and one switching action, a multiple transients takes place. For example, in the three phase transmission system, the switching action in the individual phases takes 
split at the same intense, such events produce the multiple transients. And in simple words, I can say a current chopping and restacking are also the major causes of a multiple transients. As you all know, and the power system production and switch gear, the current chopping is done when the current during the opening of circuit breaker becomes zero before natural zero crossing. That is, instead of natural zero crossing, we will interrupt and make the current to get zero. This results in the high over voltages and restrict may also occur when the capacitor is de-energized by slowly moving the switch where the voltage over the capacitor increases faster than the voltage withstand of the gap between the contact of the switch. So these are the major concepts in the power transients. In this topic, this lecture definitely will help you to understand what is a transients, what are the causes of transients, how you can identify what are the internal causes and what are the external causes. In the, in the future lectures, I will teach you with many different topics. Definitely, it will help you in the examinant point of view. You can learn more easily in a simplified manner. My dear students, if you are having any doubt, please comment me in the comment box. Let me meet with the next session. Thank you.